<clears throat> I want you to write down three words for me, please. Okay. Your time now. Actually, three phrases. Uh, the first word is enantiodromia. E N A N. Okay. T I O D R O M I A. E N A N. Enantiodromia. E N A N T I O D R O M I A. M I A. Okay. The second word I'd like you to write down, give yourself a little bit of space if you're taking notes. Behaviorism. Behaviorism. And then uh, screw down a couple of lines and put the words extrinsic motivators. Extrinsic motivators. Okay. Now the meaning of this is first an antiodromia is a is a Greek word that C. G. Young, the great psychologist, created when he he wanted to explain why some things a little bit is a good deal and a lot is a bad deal, okay? And his concept is any concept taken to its extreme tends to create the opposite of the desired effect. Any concept taken to its extreme tends to create the opposite of the desired effect. A simple example is food, okay? The right amount of food will nourish your body get you to the right body weight, you'll have lots of energy. Uh, if you eat extreme amounts of food, it's not good for you. You overload all your organs, you get fat. Um, particularly bad if you eat extreme amounts of bad foods. Then you become diabetic, you get heart disease, whatever. Okay. Um, another example is freedom. If people are really free to do what they want, okay, then the crazies go up and down the street carrying guns and everybody's afraid to leave their house. And so instead of being free, they're actually captive. Okay. An antiodromia, anything taken to its extent, taken to can be taken to an extent where you get the opposite of the desired effect. The second is behaviorism and behaviorism is the belief that you can control people's behavior by extrinsic motivators. Okay, Pavlov, B.F. Skinner, those are the people who taught behaviorism. Okay, um, and and for example, in behaviorism, they do not they, they do not treat things like thoughts, beliefs, and emotions. They think you're a you're 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 like a robot, and you know you you remember Pavlov's uh, story where he'd ring a bell and the dog would get hungry and he'd. He'd hit the button and he'd get food, okay? And um, so behaviorism is another thing, okay? And the third one is extrinsic motivators, okay? And extrinsic motivators, we cover it pretty deeply in this chapter. And if you've read the chapter, you'll know that it has to do with getting, being motivated, motivate, pardon, motivated comes from motive to, to move, to drive, it drives you to some type of a behavior. It causes you to do something, okay? And the motivator is external to yourself, okay? It can be pay. It can be something simple as praise. Praise is an extrinsic motivator, okay? Um, but the, the concern I have is that, number one, so many managers believe today in behaviorism and behaviorism excludes thoughts, beliefs, and emotions. In other words, they're saying if they want to get you to do the right types of things, okay, they literally bribe you. Okay. Now you can say that that's why you go to work. Okay. And Hertzberg kind of Hertzberg addressed that very thoroughly with the concept of hygiene factors and, and motivators. Okay. But but very few managers really know how to use 
the intrinsic motivators or the intrinsic needs to, to drive behavior. And if you use the intrinsic needs, you don't have to drive behavior. The, the behavior will naturally ensue. Okay, that's the whole point of intrinsic motivators because then the people do what they want to do rather than what you want them to do. Okay, now the problem with extrinsic motivators is, is that the, not that they are extrinsic, it's that they're overused, they're abused, and they're misused. Okay, very few managers when they want to motivate a workforce, do any thinking other than use of extrinsic motivators. Okay. We want to get more Kaizen activity. So what do we do? We have the Kaizen of the week award. Okay. <clears throat> and, and if you think about it, all they're doing is bribing you. That's what it is. In other words, whenever you don't have enough motivation to do this Kaizen in and of yourself. Okay. So we're going to bribe you. Okay. Well, the truth is, very often they have a short-term benefit. They're just like fear. Okay, Fear is an incredibly strong motivator. But it's short-term, and if you keep using it, pretty soon people will say, get out of my hair. You know. Um, so the, the, the first problem is it's, it's overused. Okay? Okay? And, and literally abused. Okay? And but but the the final problem with the extrinsic motivators is it's misused okay and what what science found out actually way back in the 70s but it was too radical a thought for people to accept in the 70s and they didn't really accept it until about the 90s and that is that when you use extrinsic motivators to try to motivate creative behavior you get the exact opposite. You stifle creative behavior. Okay? Because people are not doing creative things because they're getting paid for it. They're doing creative things because it feeds their inner self. It gives them a sense of satisfaction. It satisfies their passion. Okay? And so when you start rewarding that, let, let me give you an example. Munavar, you're going to go to the, let me pick on somebody else. Ryan, you're going to go to the to the airport to go on a business trip. Okay. You've got two choices. Okay. You can take a, a cab or you can have your wife drive you. Okay. Now, the action is exactly the same. It's getting from you to your, to your, to the airport on time. Right. Nothing sophisticated about that at all. Okay. But let's say the cabbie takes you, okay, and he takes you there, okay? You'll probably thank him and give him a tip, right? Okay, now let's say your wife takes you there. She drops you off. What's going to happen if you thank her and give her a tip? She'll think that tip Here, part is You did weird. a great job. Here you go, 10 bucks, you know? <laughs> What's going to happen? Anybody, what's going to happen? She, well, she, she probably, she, yeah, she'll not drop you next time. <laughs> yeah, no, I will no, never she'll throw the ten dollar bill back in your face and say, "I didn't do this for ten dollars. <laughs> I did this because you're my husband and I love you." Right? Okay. Well, take it to the other extreme, you know. So, what do you, what should you do with your wife? You know, you thank her and you give her a kiss. Okay. Now, let's say the cabbie does that. What happens if you thank him and give him a kiss? <laughs> 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 it's the difference between extrinsic and intrinsic rewards. Okay. Your wife did that not to make 10 bucks. It's not her job. She did it because she wanted to. It satisfies an inner need of helping her take care of her husband. Okay. Okay. It's the difference between what we call market and personal conditions. Okay. So every time you're thinking about extrinsic reward, rewards, Think about that example, you know, when you're doing that with your workers, when they do a Kaizen activity and come up with a great thing and you give them 10 bucks, you have just destroyed their intrinsic motivation. Okay. They'll, they'll love the 10 bucks for about 10 minutes. 
But the next time you want a Kaizen activity, they say, well, okay, are you going to give me 20 bucks for this one? You've destroyed it. They have a term, they call it over-justification. Okay. Okay. So I've, I've, I've reached my 10 minutes. I need to, I need to shut up here, but I want you to remember those, those, those three things. An antiodromia, anything taken to its extreme can create the opposite of the desired effect. Behaviorism, which is, is driving behavior exclusive of, of thoughts, beliefs, and, and mental activity. It's all just physical. It's quid pro quo. It's a transactional rela relationship. Okay. And, and the, misuse abuse and overuse of extrinsic motivators thank you doc thank you sir uh